Shalom, Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Give our praise to Ahaya Ashri Ahaya and our Dono Yache Meshiaka. Today we're going to be looking into prayer and the instructions of prayer. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Genesis chapter 20 and verse 17. So we can see the word for prayer in Hebrew is a good uh, indication and validation that we actually still speak Hebrew today in the Hebrew language. Uh, we read Genesis 20 and 17. So Abraham prayed unto Allah. Now, can you tap on the word for pray? Yes, 864 19. It's polelo. Now, <laughs> he went straight to the Hebrew, <laughs> the true Hebrew. <laughs> word in the Yiddish they have palal and then you have the Americanish Hebrew where they use this they say there is no vowels and only consonants and they say palal but as brother Zakwa already attested if you can can you read the definition please you can read the strongest definition it says a primitive root to judge officially or mentally by extension to intercede mm -hmm. or to pray to entreat, judge, or judgment, to make prayer, or make prayer, or make praying, make supplication. So you see, it means to pray, to entreat, right? And the word, it's the Hebrew letter, the P, the L, and the L. And in Igbo, still to this day, the word for pray is pere, pere, or pere. So when if we wanted to pray, we want to say, let us pray, we say, kai pekalalo. So the language is still consistent to this day. The ancient words that Abraham was speaking, we still speak it to this day, right? according to Ahaya's mercy. And you can check the documents. You can see that in number 56 on the document. So the word for pe is pelelo or pelelo. The lo, the pe means pray. Lo is a, is a suffix that intensifies what you're saying. And lo also point, it means to point. So it's pelelo, so you're, you're, it's intensive request towards hence you're making a prayer so you can see how the language is still understood by the uh Igbo today now that was, that was one thing i was touching on when we were speaking the other day mm -hmm. is um, how you can tell that it's the the actual language because right here on uh, 864.19 on on palello they have a primitive root like this word is the root right but the but we were saying it, it can't be the actual language because it doesn't show the root within the root. And, and the Igbo language to this day still shows the root of the word inside of what they call a primitive root. <laughs> so you can, you can see which one is actually true by which one you can get further edification on and which one can go deeper and actually show more of a root. Than the, than the Yiddish. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> that's funny because what they call in a primitive root out there is that's actually three different words in, in one word. Right. There. It's like in Igbo, that's actually a sentence. You have pe, lo, lo, <laughs> pe, lo, lo. That's a whole, that's a whole <laughs> sentence in itself. So, right. as you mentioned that before, and it's it's consistent when we look at the, the words and the scriptures, the Hebrew words, to see that it's still in our language today. Right. We praise Ahaya for his mercy. And our dono, Yache, has given us admonition on how to pray. So let's look at his instructions. He instructs us to pray faithfully and to forgive. All right? Let's look at Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 26. Mark chapter 11, verse... Is that Mark? Yeah, please. Okay, excuse me. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Yache answering saith unto him, have faith in Allah. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now it's interesting because if you've been following along with us, brothers and sisters, you know that there's twelve Holy Spirits, the twelve virgins, and there's twelve women clad in black. The first principal power of the twelve Holy Spirits is faith. And the first power of the women clad in black, the dark spirits, is unbelief or doubt. That's why faith is what he admonished on first, to be faithful and without doubting that we can overcome. Right? Therefore, I say unto you, 
What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. That's right. And now this is also admonishing us that when by precept we're going to look at the book of James later on to see that the things we pray for we have to pray for things that are according to Ahaya's will not according to our own pleasure so that we may receive what we ask we're going to see that as we get later on in the lesson all right and when ye stand praying forgive for if ye have ought against any that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses so we have to be very very full of mercy I think it was Micah chapter 6 or was it, you know, Malachi 6 and 8 where he talked about what does Ahaya require of thee but to love mercy and to do justly and walk humbly with thy Ahaya so we have to be full of mercy because Ahaya has compassion upon us every day so we have to do the same that we may be forgiven for what we have done right? but if you do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses so be encouraged, brothers and sisters. You have to forgive from the heart. Right. Sincerely, whomever and whatever they have done, no matter what it is, forgive. Because we've been forgiven. This is great grace. We've been, been forgiven for a multitude of sins. As Romans chapter 5 talked about how much grace abounds for the amount of sins that we've been forgiven for. All right? Uh, that was verse 26. Yes. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. And as Adonna admonishes the prayer thou ceasing. Uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not Elohim, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not Elohim, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the higher said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not Elohim avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? So he's showing, look at how an unjust person, if he kept getting, keep getting bothered, he's going to actually go avenge the person. How much more Allah Hayyam, who is actually righteous, is going to uh, help those that continually call upon him. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Now that right there is an interesting part about faith on the earth because faith faith is what's being tested. The world is going to be given over to unbelief. Right. And we have to abide in faith. That's why he says, shall the Son of Man, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Are we going to abide in the faith? Are we going to be believers all the way to the end? And as we discuss, a believer is one that keeps the commandments, believes in the name of and bears the fruits of the Spirit. Are we going to be true believers all the way to the end? We have a great test coming, brothers and sisters. That's why Ahai has given us this opportunity to admonish our prayer. And we have to pray and pray very fervently from a whole heart and a sincere heart for, the, for now and for the times that come that we may be saved. Let's look at uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 32 to 36. Luke chapter 21, verse 32. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So all the things are coming. Everything that's in the book. The plagues and the blessings. Right? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So we have admonishment that so long as heaven and earth is here and we're living on it, as we can look up and see the heavens and we're standing on the earth, the word has not gone anywhere. The commandments must be kept and we still have to bear the fruits of the Spirit. All right? And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. And that, that shows that when things are going bad, that people are going to go back into the world and they're going to be weighed down with being hung over because surefitting is being hung over from drunkenness and giving into just drinking it up, living it up because they've, they've gone back into the world and they, they're not coming back. That, it actually is... Um doubt is an unbelief because once you see all the bad things happening you go into unbelief like oh whatever man and you just go live it up mm -hmm. try to act like it ain't happening right. just ignore it 
that's already happening today and we haven't even gone to the fullness of all the destructions to come. So be, be admonished, brothers and sisters, to gird your hearts now in faith and sobriety. And care for this life and so that and so that day come upon you unawares. Wow. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And notice watch means you have to keep yourself. Not just literally looking at what's going on, but you only have to watch yourself, guard your soul, and pray always. So this is a corroboration of we have to pray without ceasing and we attain unto this. Because it's going to be a time of high spiritual wickedness. Therefore, we have to be girded up in the spirit in works of righteousness and prayers in righteousness and faith in all righteousness. All right. Now, we know 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, Pray without ceasing. So it's a very straight commandment. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 19 tells how we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. All right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in Ahiah and in the power of his might. Power is nice in the fruits of the Spirit. So he's, this is why we keep hopping on fruits of the Spirit, bearing fruit, working righteousness, because these are the things that are going to protect us from all the evil that's about to come and already here as well. Put on the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the, of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You do it all. You do bear all the fruits of the spirit. You've done all that is required to stand. And you will not be put to shame because Meshiach Ayat shall be in you. Alright? Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now it's interesting, your feet shower the gospel of peace, that's the atoning blood of Yahshua, so that is standing on the rock, the foundation, and having a shield of faith. By believing in him, it protects you. Alright? And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And you see how prayer plays into it. You have to always be praying. Right. We would admonish, continue to pray always. Because right. prayer is our weapon. Prayer is our, our, our weapon of warfare, along with the fruits of the Spirit. And work in righteousness. And watching thereunto with all pres uh, perseverance and supplication for all saints. And then we see again, while you're praying always, you're watching, you're guarding yourself, and you're persevering. You're keeping the commandments. You're not falling away. You start just man falling seven times and get it back up again. You mess up, you repent, you pray, and you don't do it again. You bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, and you strive with more zeal and sincerity to overcome the iniquity and to attain unto the hope in Yahweh. Right? That's right. You want to go to 18? Uh, verse 19, please. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Yes. Pray for us too, please. All right. Uh, now, let's look at what Yahweh has instructed us straightly on prayer in uh, Matthew 5. Uh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 15. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Excuse me. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And there we see how his mind is to stand away from vanity. All right. Don't give vanity place. Right? Don't seek to be glorified in the sight of men, but seek you the glory that cometh from Allah. I am only. And Allah Hayim is a spirit, and he seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. So you know, Yahshua is admonishing us, 
bear the fruits of the Spirit. Because Ahaya will see what's within us and we, He will reward us openly. Right? But, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And you know, brothers and sisters, you're well aware of the different religions today that use the vain repetitions. Some use beads and whatnot, right. for counting and whatnot. You're well aware of these things. That's uh, Yache testified that these religions are not true. And we praise Ahaya that Yache has given us admonition so that we may abide in the true religion, the belief in Ahaya Alahaya and his son Yache Mishiaga by the sanctification of our mother, the Ruaka Kwadoshi. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father also will also forgive you. So there we see here, once again, forgiveness. Okay, if you pray and you have bitterness in your heart, that's grieving to the Holy Spirit. That's what uh, Ephesians 4, about verse 29 to like 31 I think it was 30 and 31 talked about grieve not the Holy Spirit, let go all bitterness and wrath and malice. You have to forgive in your heart so that you may be forgiven as well and that your prayers may be heard. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And be admonished, brothers and sisters, and take it to heart. Let go of the former errors that anyone has made against you. Wink at ignorance. We have to understand that this is a key indicator to know that the spirit of Yahweh is in us. Because he died for our sins and forgave us when we repented unto him. So we can know that we are in him and he is in us by the strength of his spirit to forgive others. If we struggle to forgive, know for a surety that that's not the spirit of Yahweh. That's the enemy trying to hold you back. Because we have to remember Matthew chapter 7 says, What measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you. If we cannot forgive. We won't be forgiven. And this is important in regards to prayer because we have to understand we're even supposed to consider the judgment to come before we pray, which will inspire us to forgive others so that we may be forgiven for what we have done. If we look at uh, Matthew, I mean, Sirach, Chapter 18, verse 23 and 24. Sirach chapter 18, verse 23. Before thou prayest, prepare thyself, and be not as one that tempteth, tempteth Ahia. Confess your faults, and, and let go of whatever inadequacies you might be dealing with, that you may attain unto the full stature of Yahche. Don't tempt Ahia coming with uh, feeling self-justified right. or being lifted up against another but come to him in humility because remember a humble heart and a contrite spirit he will in no wise despise so that lets you know you have to come to him in the fruits of the spirit to be received of him so you can understand he said don't tempt him All right. think upon the wrath that shall be at the end and the time of vengeance when he shall turn away his face. And that will inspire you to forgive, knowing that his wrath is going to come in judgment. And if we don't forgive, we will not be forgiven in that time of judgment. So may we be exhorted to abound in that fruit of the spirit of patience and long suffering and being full of bowels of mercies unto others. Also, we have more admonition on prayer. In, let's look at Psalms 55, verse 16 and 17, please. Psalm chapter 55, verse 16. As for me, I will call upon Allah, and Ahayah shall save me. 
evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he, and he shall hear my voice you know, and that gives us exhortation to understand there are appointed times for prayer right. yes we are to pray without ceasing so in your as you're going all day, every day, you're supposed to be praying within your heart and singing hymns and psalms unto Ahia within your heart that he may keep you. And you have an example of that in the book of Maccabees. Second uh, uh, Maccabees chapter 15, verse 21 to 27. They were fighting and praying in their hearts while they were fighting. So you have an example of how to pray without ceasing. And also, they are literal appointed times. You have evening. As the going down of the sun, the angels go to give their report unto I of all the deeds of men from that day. So we're to pray at that time. And notice that's the first time because the day starts at even and ends at even. You have then at midday, I mean in the morning, that's the next appointed time because the angels go give report of what all transpired in the night. And then at midday. And this is another appointed time to pray according to the scriptures that we may be in sync with the heavenly times and we can get more understanding on that in uh, Apocalypse of Paul 17 after we finish reading the psalm I think it was, it was just wait you read 16 and 17 already? alright let's look at Apocalypse of Paul chapter 7 so we can get more exhortation on praying at the appointed times and praying continually and blessing Ahia continually this is the uh, Apocalypse of Paul, verse, I mean, verse 7. Behold, ye sons of men, the creature is subject to Elohim, but the human race alone sins. For this cause, therefore, ye sons of men, bless Ahia Elohim unceasingly, every hour and every day. Now we see, now we see why we were told prayer without ceasing. But we're seeking, we're hoping to attain unto this hope, and the angels bless him continually. And we want to be as angels. We want to partake in immortality. Right. So we ought to do as they do in preparation and hope that we will be as they are by Yache in us. Right. The, the angels even understood that when you look in, in Revelation either 18 or 19, okay. when the angels said, I am thy fellow brother, worship me not. Right, because right. They already understood that we were going to be like them. Right, uh, Revelations 19 and right. 10, yes. He said, I'm thy fellow brethren, I have the testimony of Yache. Right. Because they all have his spirit in them. The righteous angels have the spirit of Yache. And that's why this is this preparation for us to have his spirit in us now. That we may be kept and be found worthy by his spirit in us and the seal of the Holy Spirit which would be evident in us by bearing the fruits of the Spirit, that we will become angels too. It says, But especially when the sun has set, for at that hour all the angels proceed to a higher to worship him and to present the works of men, which every man hath wrought from the morning till the evening. And there you see why David said, At evening, morning, and noon will I pray unto thee. Because when the sun has set, when the sun has gone down, so the prayer hours, when the sun is setting, you can go prepare for prayer. Because when it is gone down, the angel goes to give report of what you have done for the day. Right. Whether good or evil, and there is a certain angel who proceeds rejoicing concerning the man in whom he dwells. And that's interesting. Notice that whether good or evil, so whether you pray or not, the angel is still reporting on you. Right. For those of us who want to be in good grace of Ahaya, it is expedient for us to pray at the appointed times. When therefore the sun has set in the first hour of night, in the same hour the angel of every people and every man and woman who protect and preserve them because man is the image of Elohim. Similar, similar, similarly also in the matin hour which is the twelfth of the night, all the angels of men and women go up to Elohim to worship Elohim and present every work which each man hath wrought, whether good or evil. Moreover, every day and night the angels show to Elohim an account of all the acts of the human race. To you, therefore, I say, ye sons of men, bless the high Elohim without fail all the days of your life. With prayer, we have to work righteousness and we have to be humble 
because these are acceptable unto Ahaya as a living sacrifice for us to attain unto the hope in Yachin. So, let's look at the exhortations pertaining to that in uh, James, um, James chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. James chapter 1, verse 4. But all patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Know this already, bear the fruits of the Spirit, right? Because right? that's what's going to get you perfect. And let, Lord, as he said, let patience have her perfect work. That's one of the holy virgins. Right. Right? Continue. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Elohim that giveth all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. So if you're lacking in the fruits, ask of Elohim that he may increase you. Because you're working in patience. You want to attain unto the next fruit. Because we're seeking to become whole in Mishiach Ayache by bearing all twelve of the virgins. So, if you're lacking, ask of Ahaya. Ask with a sincere heart and humility. Continuing in patience, enduring the trials that you're already facing as you're seeking to grow further. And He will give it unto you because you're coming with a sincere heart and a whole heart, alright? But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. We can't be double minded. Alright. We can't want our Hayat to bless us and also want our loss. We have to separate ourselves from ourselves. We have to put off everything that we was and become who Mishiach Ayache is that we may attain. Can't have something that we want contrary to our Hayat's will. And the whole duty of man, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, is to keep the commandments. And Yahweh said that if you love me, keep my commandments. For sure. And he said, abide in me and I in you. And if you abide in me, you shall bear much fruit. So that we know that Ahaya wants us to bear fruit. Therefore, we can't be double-minded. We have opportunity to bear the fruits of the Spirit. We have to walk towards that with all wholeness of heart to bear those fruits of the Spirit. That our prayers may be heard and we may be increased in the Spirit by Ahaya's mercy upon us. Amen. Yeah, so let not that man think that he shall receive anything of Ahaya. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And understand that double-mindedness comes from you still in the lust of the flesh. Right. Operating in pride, guile, malice, anger, hatred, variance, strife, emulation, unbelief, lust, covetousness, riot, lasciviousness. Any loss of the flesh is hindering you. Because you, you go in two ways. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve Allah I am and Mammon. Mammon is avarice. You have to let go of loss and go on that straight and narrow road to attain unto Yahche. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he hath that he is exalted. You on two to four. I mean on four to eight, right? Okay. That was a good verse, eh? because it shows you have to be humble. To be a man of low degree, Yachi was humble. And that's is where we'll have our rejoicing because the more humble we are, the more Yachi will lift us up. Because Yachi humbled himself and Ahaya lifted him up. Okay. Uh, now, let's look at uh, James 4, 1 to 10 to see the opposite end. Because we've seen how if you lack something, ask. If you lack wisdom, ask of Allah and he'll give it unto you because he upbraided not. And you see how well, that's when you're working righteousness because you're bearing patience already. Right. And then James exhorted us, don't be double-minded. Don't have lust contrary to Ahaya's will. And he's going to give further exhortation to understand why people's prayers are not being answered today. Because we're asking for the wrong things. And James is going to exhort us on this here. James chapter 4 verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? James chapter 4 verse 2. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not. They wanted the Holy Spirit. They wanted spiritual gifts. Right. That's exactly what Simon wanted. Right. They wanted power from on high for their lust. Right. They did not want it. 
for righteousness, for the sincerity of the spirit in humility. He was testifying against how we come incorrectly. We're not going to receive anything. Right. Right? Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with Elohim? Notice, if you're a friend of the world, that's because you're still walking in the lust of the world. Right. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of Elohim. Mm. The lust of the world, the pride of life, makes you Elohim's enemy. And therefore, how can your prayers be heard when you're his enemy? So it's exhortation for us to put away these things and partake in what it what is required of us to be his friend. As Yahweh said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So we well know what is required of us to be a friend. And now we're edified on what separates us to become an enemy. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Notice the Holy Spirit wants us too. Yahweh wants us. In this Old Testament, it says that Ahaya is a jealous Allah. Right. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, Allah resteth in the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. He giveth more grace. We say, wherefore, he saith, Allah resisteth the proud. So we see we... Oh, excuse me. Resisteth. Sorry. That's not proud so we see how we were so wicked, we were so far gone, yet he giveth grace and still giveth us opportunity to change. Right. Because he had been resisting us, we had been his enemy. Right. He's, as he said, he resisted the proud, yet if we humble ourselves and acknowledge our sin and confess it, he, as he said, he would give grace to the humble. We know the grace abounded more for the multitude of sins, as Romans chapter 5 talks about how we did so many things wrong, yet there's grace for these former sins. If we believe and work righteousness going forward and do not look back and do not commit sin anymore. Submit yourself, therefore, to Elohim. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see how James is exhorting us? You see what he showed us what's going on. Like, hey, this is why prayers are not being answered. This is why you're not receiving the Holy Spirit. Right. Now he's exhorting us. Submit yourselves unto Allah. I am partaking in humility, brothers and sisters. Draw nigh to Allah. I am, and he will draw nigh to you. And we see humility is what draws us nigh. Humility and simplicity of spirit. And when we put on humility, you see how we start bearing the fruits of the spirit? Right. Allah I am starts drawing near unto us. Yah comes closer to us because we're coming closer to him. Alright? Clench your hands, you sinner. See? Put away iniquity. Wash your hands. This is, you know, remember, our hands were full of blood. As Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15 to 20 talks about when we look at it. He's saying, cleanse our hands. Stop all the evil deeds. Stop breaking the commandments. Right. So that our hand would draw close unto us. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Notice, it's not just an outward work. Right. Washing your hands is outward. So stop committing sins outwardly. Don't do things to wrong to any man. Right. Be at peace with all men. And cleanse your heart. That's the fruits of the Spirit as well. Because you have to purge within. We can't seem righteous on the outside, saying we keep the law. But in our hearts, we entertain evil thoughts, evil surmising. Wicked imaginations, which are actually abominations, according to Proverbs chapter 6, verse uh, 17 and 18. So you see how it's, we have to become whole, brothers and sisters. He actually said, wash the inward of the cup, that, so that the whole thing may be clean, when he reproved the uh, Pharisees for their hypocrisy in Matthew 23. You see how you have to be whole. You have to purge within too. It's not just an outward show. This is why we, Ahaya, has encouraged us to constantly exhort brothers and sisters to bear the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. All right? Um, a good bit of the, the works of the flesh are internal. Like, if somebody was having an issue of some of the works of the flesh, you wouldn't know it. The only way you would know it is if they, um, if, if they operate in it. But 
as far as where the heart and the mind is, no man knoweth because even in the um, what was it the apocalypse of Paul, when the most high asked them, uh, do you think that that one on earth that you can say so you can you can lie or do whatever it is? Yes. Like, nobody would know because it's inside of your heart. Yes. It's in your mind. Yes. So so now it's He's showing that Alahim way of all things, and Alahim knows what's in your heart and what's in your mind. So you have to completely cleanse it, it externally and internally. That's a good exhortation, and 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 the way he referenced in the Apocalypse of Paul, I think it's uh, Apocalypse of Paul sixteen and seventeen. If I, if I remember, if I had suffered me to remember right. And that's why, again, why Ahaya has us exhorting on fruits of the Spirit. Because right. it cleanses our hearts out, gets us cleaned out from within that, that iniquity, that sin in our members, has no dominion over us, and is brought into the subjection of Mishiach and Yache. That was all thanks to sincerity and meekness and truth. Right. That's very good exhortation, brothers and sisters. Uh, um, verse 9 in James chapter 4. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. And this is when you're realizing you've done much wrong and you're really repentant. A real, a true repentant heart, seeking hope, seeking the hope and salvation in Yahweh sincerely. So you're really seeing what you've been doing wasn't right. Hence, you're crying and weeping and praying unto Ahia for help. Because you were, you were. Uh, you were laughing and rejoicing in it because you were thriving in iniquity. And it was it was pleasing, it was pleasurable unto you. And then you find out that everything that you were doing was wrong. So your laughter and your joy turns into mourning because you were on the path to die. It's a very humbling process. Right. When you realize you thought you had it right and you didn't. Right. You have to start over <laughs> because you're becoming a baby again. Unless you be born of water and spirit, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of Allah. I am. You have to be reborn, brothers and sisters. Humble yourselves in the sight of Ahaya, and he shall lift you up. And we be exalted in these things. You know, brothers and sisters, now you have good exhortation from the scriptures and how we should pray and how. We will be heard in our prayers. Now, on the opposite end as well, if you look at John 9 and 31, it tells us about how if we don't do these things, we won't be heard. John 9 and 31. Now we know that Elohim here is not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of Elohim and do of his will, him he heareth. So you worship him and keep his commandments, he will hear you. Even the Pharisees knew that. Because right. remember the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat in uh, Matthew 23, verse uh, 1 to 3. The, the problem with the Pharisees was they were just hypocrites because they taught the right things, but they wouldn't do it. As uh, Matthew, I believe, is 12 and 1 testified that their leaven was hypocrisy. I mean, Luke 12 and 1 testifies that their leaven was hypocrisy. Uh, let's touch uh, Isaiah 51, 15 to 20. Please. Isaiah, one cha uh, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15 and when he spread forth and when you spread forth your hands I will hide my eyes from you yea when you make many prayers I will not hear your hands are full of blood so you see when you're sinning when we sin we won't be heard alright wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings uh, excuse me Put away the evils of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. So now we have confirmation scripturally what it means by wash your hands, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Right. Stop sinning. Right? Continue. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. That was interesting that he said learn to do well. Right. That gives edification on what he was talking about in uh, Timothy. Chapter 2, I think it's about verse 14 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Allah. I am a workman worthy of his hire, neither not to be ashamed, right. rightfully dividing the word of truth. You know, it's saying study to learn to do it yourself. Because when you actually do righteousness, then you'll be able to teach another. 
<laughs> that's, you know, it's amazing that this gospel is was sitting there. Well, that's exactly what Paul was exhorting on in Romans chapter five. He said, "Unto unto patience, experience, because when you once you actually start working the fruits of the spirit, you then can help somebody else to work the fruits of the spirit." Right. That is going to tie into <laughs> another lesson. <laughs> I'm talking about Yache being the example for us. <laughs> Amen. Uh, come now and let us reason together, say Ahia. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Look at the mercy Ahia has. Come now, let us reason together. He, he deals in the fruits of the Spirit. We are full of iniquity, yet he's coming speaking to us humbly like, come, let's reason together. Let's talk about this. Do we see how we have such an example in Allahayam that we ought to be the same merciful, abounding in goodness, in humility, in long suffering and patience when someone does wrong unto us? This ties back to why he said, Forgive others that your sins may be forgiven. And why he said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Because if you don't forgive, it's not Ahaya in you. Because Ahaya forgives. So you can't understand. Right. He's, ah, yes, he's all powerful, right? Allah Shodaya, the Almighty. Yes. He's all humble as well. This time, this is going to tie into the next lesson on Mishiaka example. <laughs> uh, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. We were so bloody and dirty. He'll cleanse us. All right. And this, uh, he was prophesying of Yache being our cleansing. All right. If you be willing and obedient, so you have to be willing. You have to want this. You have to give heed to it. To be willing is to accede to something, to agree. Like, okay, I'm a sinner. I'm full of sins. I need help. Right. I've been going the wrong direction. Please. Teach me, show me the right way. And being willing makes you obedient. And you set, you substantiate your willingness by your obedience. Right. So if you say you're willing in word but you're not obedient, you're lying to yourself. Right. We have to do it in word and in deed. Right? And if we're willing, what would it be? You shall eat the good of the land. We're going to make it to the kingdom. <laughs> right? But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of Ahiah has spoken it. We have straight exaltation, brothers and sisters. Right. If we do it, we will make it. If we do it not, we will perish. That's why Paul said in Romans 2, and I believe it's verse 12 or 14, somewhere in that range, he said, Not the hairs of the law justified before Allah am. But the doers of the law shall be justified. Our faith is shown by our works, as James talked about in chapter 2 of James. So there we have the exhortation. And let's look at, we've been exhorted also to pray and for all things, do all things by prayer. In now Philippians 4 and 6, I exhorted us to do all things by prayer and supplication. So we do nothing of our own will, but ask for all direction in all things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto Allah. So then we have an exhortation and understanding, brothers and sisters, right. on prayer. Do all things in righteousness. Right. May I be pleased to cause this word to abound in our hearts and we bear the fruits of his spirit. Close it there. Do you have anything, brother? Mm. I think I only have one thing. When, um, when you mentioned about um, how the enemy works and how he tries to play on our conscience with our past sins and our past words, mm -hmm. even um, I wanted to go into what, what Solomon's prayer for, for us was if we would turn from our iniquity and turn unto him and, and toward the city, toward where his face is, 
and that we were we were praying to him that he would deliver us. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess just for exhortation for the people to be to be encouraged to actually turn from their iniquities and Allah will forgive us. Allah will forgive us for all of our sins that we have done. It's, it's essential, brothers and sisters. And that is good exhortation to know like you can turn. You, can, you don't have to feel like it's nothing you can do, like it's all over for you. Right, that you're just stuck in it. Like, I've been doing this so long that this is what I know. You can, you can always change. Yes. We've been given we've been given the power from Alahim to change. So yes. I am be magnified. Through Messiah. Um, do you have the, the scriptures so you can reference it so that people can go read it? Sure. Uh, First Kings chapter eight, uh, verse twenty eight and twenty nine. He said, Yet thou yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Ahaya. My Allah, I am to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayed before thee today, that thine eyes may be open toward this house, night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and to thy and of thy people Israel when they shall pray toward this place. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. Daniel is a good example of why he prayed three times a day toward Jerusalem. So when we pray toward and we look toward Jerusalem. Alright, that's it. Alright. Praise Ahaya. Shalom, brothers and sisters.